Eh? Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Before you sit down, I would like to honor our pastor for the privilege of being here this morning and his wife. Thank you for inviting me. I'm here for the very first time. I also came with one of my hosts in the nation of Uganda. He's hosting me. He makes, at least I slept under a roof last night because of him. I would like to honor Elder Thomas, who is the husband of a former minister, a minister in this country. Thank you for bringing us and for coming with me. Yes. My friend, Apostle Joe Paul will join us before the end of the second service. So if you want to see him, you have to wait. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this morning. Welcome your holy presence. Have your way. Let none of us leave the way we came. Father, let our lives never be the same. Take us further. This morning, let the purposes for which we were created re-echo throughout eternity in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, because we know you have heard. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Well, just before you sit down, if you have people that follow the service online, virtually, this is the time to remind them. Somebody asked me from U.S. that she wants to join the service. So this is the time to remind all of them, okay? So, Pastor, I don't know how you do it, but they should send reminders, whatever, at this time, because I know some people would follow online. I don't know why they're smiling. Praise God. Once you do that, have your seat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. We live in a modern world. You have gadgets. I may forget. I have written some books, but I didn't bring any because I'm still traveling. But one of the things I'm talking well, the thing I'm talking about today is in the book titled The Concept of a Life purpose. The concept of a life purpose. I don't know how you're going to get it. We can talk about that later on. But we have to go. Let's go to our Bible, to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. How many of us are excited to be in the house of the Lord? Uh, you don't sound very excited. How long have you been a Christian? Did you become a Christian only yesterday? I've been a Christian for more than 30 years. Since my teenage years, I was only about 17, 18, when I gave my life to Christ in a college campus in Nigeria. And God has helped me all those years. And I wonder what life looks like for those that don't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Wow. How do they live? What do you do when you're in trouble? When you lack wisdom, who do you talk to? Wow, 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 wow. Very difficult to imagine. Very difficult to imagine. If you're in this house this morning and you're not a Christian, um, I hope you become one before the end of this service in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And if you're a Christian and you think you have too much problems and you are one of those people who is always having, um, in Nigeria we call it um, Tari night or night vigil. What do you call it here? When you pray through the night? Huh? Uh, they told me yesterday, I forgot already, overnight. If you're one of those people that whenever you have a problem, you do overnight. I want to ask you, when you do overnight, what do you talk to God about? Are you telling him to take away the problems? Do you not know it's true problems you rise in this life? Amen. Have you not known that David was useless until he killed Goliath? He was just an ordinary boy. Unless you slay your Goliath, you're not going anywhere. Problems are allowed by God, even when they're sent by the devil to promote you. Amen. I know some of you don't get that. Because we have, I know, I know you don't get it. Because I know there are many types of Christians. But the Christians that founded the Bible, the Christians of Paul, that, those kind of Christians is the kind of Christian all of us should be. Paul said in Acts 14, I'm going to come to my passage in a moment, verse 22, we must through tribulation enter the kingdom. Amen. Tribulation means thilipsis in Greek. It means pressure. It means problems. But they, he was talking to disciples. They were already in the kingdom. What was he saying? How can you talk to disciples saying kingdom? If you're not in the kingdom and you're a disciple, How? But what he meant is that you go deeper in the things of God by the problems that are allowed in your life. Some people are saying, oh. 
I won't be where I am today, except for the problems I've been through. Amen. I would have been a jellyfish. I was growing up afraid of everything. I spent extra years in college. Because I was fear of, I was afraid of my professors. They used to boast in class. They used to boast. I took it to heart. I didn't know they were just making noise. I was born three months to the end of the Nigerian Civil War. So there was fear when I was born. That fear was living in me passively. I was afraid of many things. When it was time to drive, I was afraid of the cars. I said, ah, the car is coming. I played soccer to the college level for my secondary school in Nigeria back then. I never went into the 18, you know what they call 18 yard box? Who plays soccer here? No, it's modernized now. I was a winger. I used to play outside left. I always loved the ball inside. I never went to the 18. I said, they'll break my leg, go. <laughs> but how do you score a goal without going into the goal post? How do you score a goal? Have you watched Mbappe play soccer? Messi play soccer? Now inside 18, then they go. And that's how the score goes. Is that not true? But I was afraid. I was fearful. I never knew. The Bible says they became valiant in battle. Amen. Out of weakness, inside the battle, they became strong. Amen. There's no testimony without testing. Amen. You can't have a testimony except you're tested. And yet, the average person is afraid of test. That means you are postponing your testimony. Nothing great happens without great problems. But that's not my message today. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 in particular. We read from 8, 7, 8, 9, and 10. But in verse 9, he said, Who has saved us? He saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. My God. What is purpose? His own purpose and grace. What is purpose? It's impossible to live a great life without understanding the concept of purpose. If you don't understand the law of purpose, it will be difficult to live an extraordinary life. People, are, people want many things in this life. Some people want to buy a car, house. They want to marry. They want to be wealthy. Some people, they, want to, they, they don't like poverty. All kinds of things. Some people, all kinds of things. But few people understand purpose. Have you wondered why the richest people on earth are not Christians? Of all the noise we make in the church, all over the world, we make a lot of noise, but we don't have the money. And people have money. They don't talk. They just make money. Yes. I'm telling you the truth. Have you ever seen um, um, the Amazon founder talking about money? Have you seen um, Bill Gates talking about money or, or Warren Buffett or um, Mark Zuckerberg? Do you hear them talking about money, having seminars about money? It's just they have seminars, but no money. They don't have seminars, but they have the money. Have you ever thought Why? What is purpose? You, you're allowed to Google. This is a class. Don't worry. Purpose. Dictionary. Now, the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. The reason for which something is done ba, 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 or created. The reason for which something exists. Hello, everybody. My time is limited, but I'm going to drive on my point in a few minutes. How many of us here went to primary school? Okay, sorry. How many of us did not go to primary school? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Don't feel bad. There are some professors that didn't go to primary school because no money to go to school. When they, were, when, they were, when they enter school, they can't do primary again now. They don't jump up. Yes. Is there anybody here that you skipped primary school? Anybody? Most of us went to primary school. I want to ask you, in all the process of education, there's, you know, there's preschool, kindergarten, they have primary, then they have, I don't know what you have in Uganda, but it's very similar, I'm sure. And then you have secondary, then college, university, first degree, second degree, PhD. I want to ask you, in all this education, which is the most important? If you were to choose only one, only one, Dabo, Sokoto, Badakasa, Kifrekete, Man of Tires. If you're going to choose only one, which one would you choose? Huh? Kindergarten? Yes. I have to come to this level, Pastor. Don't be offended. The, the people are too far from me. Yes. Which one would you choose? Primary. Primary is the most important, most fundamental. Why? What's the meaning of the word primary? Fundamental. Primary, primary, primary. I teach things that are primary. What I'm teaching you today, if you catch it, your life can never be the same. If you catch it, you'll never be the same. Once I understood it, I'm free. I'm the freest person you meet. I'm happy. There are many things I don't know. There are many things I don't have, but I'm the happiest person you ever meet in life. I sleep like a baby. I've never taken sleeping medicine since I was born. When I get to my bed, the bed catches me. I don't catch sleep. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Purpose, the reason for which something is done or created, for which something exists, my God. So, three fundamental questions. Why did God choose to create the earth? He didn't have to. Why? Number two, there are many more. Why did God choose to create human beings? Number three, why did God decide to create you? Why do you exist? Purpose. Why were you born? There are more. Why did God create the nations? The nations have once always existed. In fact, it was in the days of Pelek that the nations were divided into continents, or the world was divided into continents and nations. It's called the Pelek phenomenon, but we're not going there today. Why did God decide to create the earth? How many planets exist? Scientists say nine, some say more, but eventually they always come back to nine. Sometimes 11, 12, but they come back to nine. Nine planets. Why? Ba, 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 ba. Why is the earth the only planet where human beings live? There are planets they visit, but the only habitable planet is the earth. Why? You know why? Because our time is limited. God said, I created the earth on purpose to be inhabited. God created the earth on purpose. Why? What's the purpose of the earth? God created the earth as an extension of heaven, his kingdom. And planted Adam in the Garden of Eden and put a segment, a fragment of his glory in Eden. Adam's original calling, which has never changed, is to take the glory of God, which was in Eden, and make it go all over the world so that the earth is covered with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. That was the assignment. In Eden, what happened in Eden? It was the glory that lifted Yes, the sin of Adam defiled heaven, the utensils in heaven. Because Jesus said, don't touch me until I go to heaven and purify the utensils that were defiled by the sin in the garden. He said, don't touch me. I must go to my father in heaven. I must purify the vessels that were defiled by the sin of man. The sin was serious. But what lifted from the garden was the glory of God. How do you know that? It was the kingdom of God, the glory of God. How do you know that? Because the first statements that both John the Baptist and Jesus made in their public ministry was, repent for the kingdom of heaven is approaching. The kingdom that lifted in Eden, Jesus brought back. Repent. That's serious. Let's not go there yet. Purpose. The reason. Why did God create the earth? The Bible says that the heaven of heavens, Psalm 115 verse 16, belong to who? And what? The earth he gave to who? Mankind. Man. Men. Man. Men. Different versions. Different versions. Man. Men. Mankind. Since I'm here for the first time, let me ask my typical question, then I'll proceed. Don't worry, I'll use my time well. When it's time to stop, I'll stop, because second service will continue. Yes. Why do we have versions of the Bible and not editions of the Bible? Because when I was in secondary school, many years ago, my teacher said, don't come with the biology textbook your, your sister or brother used. Come with the most up-to-date edition. But they never said version, they said edition. So why do you have editions of books and versions of the Bible? Why don't we have editions of the Bible? Somebody must help me before I start calling people's names here now. Hello? You are using my time to waste my time. Eh? You are very smart. What do you do for a living? I know it's Sunday morning. Exactly. You're a teacher. She's right. The reason we don't have editions of the Bible is that the Bible is not growing in knowledge. People are growing in knowledge. That's why they have editions. iPhone will make new version next year because they are still growing. But version is translation from one language to the other. The most authentic words translate thought for thought, like King James Version. Some do word for word. King James Version actually did word for word, thought for thought. Very authentic. So, but watch this. It says, the heaven of heavens belong to who? God. And the earth he gave to the children of men or to mankind. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, let us. Who are the us? Elohim. Elohim, ba, 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 ba. Elohim, the Godhead. Who are the Godhead? God the Father? All of you failed. You didn't read your Bible well. God the Father? You failed again. I, Pastor Ben, you take me to dinner. It's not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's God the Father, God the Word. The Son has not always existed. Jesus became the Son of God. To become the son of man, to save man from sin. He was always equal with God from eternity past. In the beginning was what? The word. Not the son, the word. And the word was what? The word. And the word was what? The word. 
he became the son. It was a conference they had in heaven. How do we save man? You have to go and become my son, to become the son of man, to save man from sin. So he was not the son from the beginning. He was the word. So they had a conference, Genesis 126. Let us, God the Father, God the Word, God the Spirit, let us create man. In what? In, in our own image, after our likeness. Let's, and let them. Let us and let them. Let us and let them. For time, because of time, let me explain that. Some people don't understand that. It means we are going to give Nigeria to Nigerians, Amen. Canada to Canadians, Amen. Uganda to Ugandans, Ghana to Ghanaians, Amen. America to American Indians, and see what each person will do with their country. Whatever they do with it is what it will be. The American Indians were inside the bush. Don't crucify me. And Europeans came. There were four types of Europeans, Puritans, Pilgrims, and Pioneers. They started from 1492. Christopher Columbus, who discovered it. He was going to India and stopped at the Americas. He thought he was in India. He called it American Indians. And then between then and the 1700s, by 1700, there were 13 colonies from Europe in America. The rest is American history. I don't want to go there. But watch this. The Americans came from Europe and they developed America to a superpower. Do you know why? Purpose. God purposed in his heart that there be a country called America that country will be a superpower. That country will be his agent, will be, will be what you call a nation of refuge. Because in the Old Testament, you had cities of refuge. When you're in trouble, you go there. This country will be a country by immigrants, for immigrants, led by immigrants. It will become, one of the, it will become not one, the greatest nation on earth. The men that founded America, the founders of America, or the fathers, who are also called the framers of the Constitution, where they, they were, a burden was put on their heart by God to found a great nation. Because God puts burdens in the heart of founding fathers. What was the purpose of American nation? To police the rest of the world. They're not always right. They're not always morally right. But they, they, they had a purpose. To be an instrument in the hands of God. To be a big brother to the nations of the earth. How do you know that? Limited time. Do you remember Osama bin Laden? Do you know how much it cost to kill him? It, 10 years, 2001 to 2011, started by George Bush Jr., finished by Obama, President Obama. It cost more than a billion dollars. No country on earth can do that easily. Spend one billion dollars to kill one man. More than that. Travel at night with special helicopter. That one of them crashed. One of them had a problem. They abandoned it, destroyed it, so that China would not copy it. They still did. The other two, one crash landed. They were not even sure the man was in the house. They just had 75% knowledge, but they entered, they took him alive, killed him, burnt him to ashes, threw him into the ocean. That's why we can travel. Before, now, before him, there were no body machines. You don't, you, you endorse tickets, but you can't do that anymore. He changed the whole world, but America killed him so that the world can see traveling because they have a purpose to police the rest of the world. What is purpose? Why did God create the earth? He gave nations to men. Whatever Ugandans make out of Uganda is what Uganda becomes. But today I want to talk about your purpose. Why did God create mankind? He put man on earth. The man will govern this earth as he governs the universe. He put man on earth. The man would make the earth function like heaven. The more a country approaches heaven, the more developed they are. The more predictable a country is. In, in the place where I was born, I grew up. You can't know when the bus is coming. It can come anytime. And when the bus comes, it can still be waiting for people. It will, it, will, it will wait to get food before it continues. If you follow it, you miss your flight. In America, where I now live, you know when the bus is coming. If it's 1410, it will come by 1410. It will not wait for anybody. Many times I've seen the bus. I'm, sit, I'm looking at the bus. I say, excuse me, driver. He says, take the next one. I cannot stop. It's a system. The more systematic you are, the more developed you are. Even as a human being, if it takes you three hours to dress up, it means you're not systematic. Before you sleep, you should know what you're wearing. When you wake up, even if there's no light, you should be able to dress up in the dark. Yes. If you're confused about shirts as a man, buy only white shirts. So which one you wear is white. <laughs> you cannot be late because you're buffing. Instead of buffing and being late, don't buff. Nobody knows you didn't buff. <laughs> Nobody should be late. Oh, but I don't want to go there. Time. Anybody that does not know time cannot finish their destiny. If you don't have a watch, you're already in trouble. If you don't have a watch, 
I guarantee you can't finish destiny except you change. If you don't have a watch, and if you don't know time, you will miss so many things in this life. And your prayer, your overnight, will not cover it up. No, 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 no. I guarantee you that. You have to make adjustments. Why did God create the earth? That the earth functioned like heaven. Why did God place man on earth? Man are those. God placed us here to make the earth function like heaven. Every person was born for a reason. How do you know that? In the matter of two or three witnesses, every word is what? What did God say to Jeremiah? Jeremiah, look! Ba, 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 ba. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Give, give, help us. Jeremiah, what do you see? My God. I see men. They look like fish. Look again. And God said to Jeremiah, before I formed thee, I knew thee. Before you came out of your mother's womb, I separated you and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. If you are not a prophet when you enter the earth, you cannot become one on earth. Empty hands on empty heads cannot produce a prophet. If you are not a man when you were born, you can't become a man on earth. You are joking. It's either male or female. Nothing in between. If they are medical practitioners, they should remember this, that all the organ systems of the body are the same, except the reproductive organs, which are only male and female, nothing in between. Are you a doctor in the house? Am I lying? Anybody that says there's something in between is demonized and possessed. And they are challenging God, and they cannot survive. At the end of time, they will tremble at his presence. It's like those who challenge marriage, for example. I don't know where I'm going. Those who say, I can divorce my wife and marry. And people are doing that. And they're saying, I know one bishop somewhere. He divorced, he remarried. I want you to ask the bishop, has he gone to heaven and come back? Has he ever seen God before? Have you ever seen God before? The Bible says that the Pharisees came to Jesus and said, can a man divorce his wife for every cause? What did Jesus say? He said, have you never read Matthew 19 from verse 4 now? Have you never read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female and said, therefore, so therefore shall a man leave father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one. They are no longer two but what? One. What therefore God has put together. Let no... If you are putting people apart, it means you are not a man. But if you are a man, you are going to hell at the end of time. Nothing in between. There may be exceptions, but we don't deal with the exceptions. Maybe somebody is being beaten. That's an exception. We don't go there. That one, Pastor Ben, they, they deal with it. Listen now. They said to him, why then did Moses ask us to give a bill of divorce to our wives? He said, you and Moses developed divorce. Because you, Moses did it because of the hardness of your heart. But what? From the what? Beginning. Mamo, Sokoto, Patakaya. From the beginning, before time was, it was not so. There's no divorce in heaven. Therefore, God cannot be the author or creator of divorce on earth. But that's a different thing. Purpose. People don't even understand the purpose of marriage, but we're not going there. Let's talk about the purpose of your life. He said to Jeremiah, before you were formed, I knew thee. I knew thee. I'm doing well. I knew thee. I knew thee. I knew thee. Then Paul the Apostle said in Galatians chapter 1, listen to what this Paul says, when he pleased God, who separated me from where? My mother's womb. If Jeremiah was formed before he entered the mother's womb and Paul was separated from the mother's womb, it means that you were called from mother, your mother's womb. Amen. Can I prove that? Yes. That's our main test. Oh, my God. Go back to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Watch this now. We're going to move fast. Where were you born? There is a level of joy on this earth you can never know except you're living the reason why you were born. In the second service, I'm going to talk about how to find your purpose. But I'm establishing purpose in this service. How do you know what you're called to do? People think it's complex. You can arrange your room. You can arrange your clothes. You can arrange your books. But they don't believe you can arrange your life according to God's divine purpose. You can. You can arrange your life. You can think 25 years into the future. How? Repent. If you adjust your thinking and think like God, which you can, because we have the mind of Christ, we'll understand the future too. You, will, you can never know everything, but you know enough to live your own life. Heart about the God, about the ghost. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, give us. Who had saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to what? His own and grace, which was given us in Christ. His own purpose. 
What were you created to do with your life? It's a process. Nobody is created just to stand in the toilet in Nigeria and be giving people toilet roll. It's not a purpose. That happens when the country is not developing. In America, there's nobody you can pay money that will agree to stand and give another person toilet roll. They will never do it. Even if they are homeless, they have too much dignity to do that. It's not purpose. That's poverty. When I go to my country, when I land at the airport, I go to the toilet, somebody's there doing like this with toilet roll. That's not purpose. That's poverty. No, God will never call a man to be giving toilet roll to another person. Why do you say that? Because they have things they have created, they put on the wall that holds the toilet roll. How can God be, how can man be competing with that thing on the, on the wall? That's not purpose. Nobody is created by God to become a wife and just be giving birth to children with no other life. Just stay at home. What is your work? These children. These children you're calling children, they will grow up and leave you behind. That cannot be your purpose. No. There may be a season to raise them, but there must be something greater than raising them. It cannot be just to have children and, and, and somebody will be calling you mama bon boy. That should never happen. Whenever they say that romance, which is part of marriage, as God intended, romance will fly up the window if you come mama bon boy. There'll be no romance. You know, no, no romance in your marriage. And yet, inside marriage, the one God created, there's romance. That's why it's new every day. If you're not romantic in your marriage, you need help. You need to go and see a counselor because there's trouble. Any man and woman not romantic, the man will be looking at other women and the woman will just be tired. Yes, you are supposed to renew your marriage every day. As you grow older, you have to re-choose your spouse because there are many younger people that you can choose. You have to deliberately say, it is you I married, I'm still with you. It's called re-choosing, not just choose. You don't choose once, you choose and keep choosing, choosing, choosing. So that you don't commit adultery and fornication. Some people don't even understand the nature of man. When they say male and female, some women do not even know that their men have problems. They don't know that. They don't know that man is visually stimulated, that men are affected by what they see. Some people don't know. Some women don't know. They say, why? What is my problem? What makes my husband look straight? They don't understand the problem, that they already have a problem. They didn't create the problem. Yes. That's why I don't watch movies a lot. I avoid it. Because when I watch movies with my wife, my wife will see nothing happens. She's just there laughing. If I watch it, I will remember what I saw. She don't remember anything. Because I'm a man. <laughs> so God gave me the grace to slip off when they play the music, the movie. Yes. Everything has purpose. Why did God make you? Where were you born? Where were you born? Why did God create you? Why did God create you? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Let's go there very quickly. What is purpose? The reason something is done, the reason something is created, the reason why something exists. Why were you born? Why were you created? Why do you exist? Watch this. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Everybody look up. Watch this. Which God had before ordained before time. There are good works before time you were ordained to do on earth. That's your task on, in life. There is a supreme task for every life. Finding that task is your task. And fulfilling that task, when you find the task, is your final task. The reason you are born is to find the purpose of your life. And the reason you exist is to live out the purpose of your life. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Is it possible for a man to find purpose? The answer is yes, but we're not getting there yet. Where were you born? Acts 20, 24. Watch this now. Acts 20, 24. For none of these things move me. Can you give me the living translation? This one says, for none of these things move me. Neither count I my life there unto myself, that I might finish my course with joy. Listen, that's King James. Let's go to New, New, Living, the New Living Translation. For my life, put in bracket, on earth, is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned to me. Can I say to you, I, I was sent by God to tell you today that your life on earth is worth nothing, no matter who you are, no matter what you have, no matter where you've been, no matter what you don't have. 
No matter who your parents were or were not, your life on earth is worth nothing unless you use it to finish the assignment given to you in life. There is a joy you will never know. People are always struggling to be wealthy. They want to be rich. The reason they struggle so much to be wealthy is because they don't have rich friends. All their friends are poor like them. If you have, if you have friends that are really, really wealthy, I'm talking about people that enter a shop, they don't look at the price level. Because you have to be poor when you're looking at price. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I was told the story of a great man of God from my country. If I call his name, Pastor Ben knows him very, very well. He's a great man. He went to shop in London with a friend who is very wealthy. And he noticed as he was buying and shopping that the wealthy man was taking things and putting it in the shopping basket. He doesn't look at it. He went to him and said, sir, why are you just putting things? You don't look at the price. He said, because I can afford everything here. I don't need to look at the price. You are looking at the price because you don't have enough money. I have enough money. It's a true story. Some people think that we are created to always be praying about money. People think, some people think that prayer, money is a prayer point. Money is not a prayer point. If you do what you ought to do, money will find you. Can I explain that? Have you ever imagined being the best in the world at what you do? You think you look for money? Have you ever paid the price to be ranked among the top 1% in your area of life? Do you think you'll be looking for money? Some people think, I, they think that purpose means big things, medicine, engineering. They don't know that being a baba is purpose. Don't you know that the Prince of America has a baba that babs him every day? Have you ever seen an American president with bushy hair before? Somebody, an American president whose hair is unkept. It's not possible. Because the baba is staying there. They bab him almost every day. That baba that is staying there has house, has buildings now, has wife, has children. They are going to school. He's paying their bills because babbing is at different levels. All babas are not the same. Some people are babbing because they dropped out of school. Some people are babbing because they were called by God to be babbing. And they babble at the highest level possible. Amen. Some people think that being a teacher is just a thunder. I don't know what to do. I'm going to be teaching people. Being a teacher is a calling. Jesus himself was a teacher. A teacher. A teacher molds the next generation. It's a tremendous call to be a teacher. When I was in primary school in Nigeria, my teachers were called by God to teach. They didn't teach for money. They had so much honor, so much dignity. When they came to my house, they had a standing ovation because they were called by God to teach. So Paul says, my life is worth nothing. Your life also is worth nothing. My God, what is purpose? What has God called you to do with your life? I don't want to run ahead of myself. So many things are bubbling. What has God called you? What is it that God has called you to do? What's your calling? What's your purpose? Jesus said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can walk. Some people are always begging for money. I had that kind of mindset, hoping that somebody would bless me. They don't understand the anatomy of a miracle. They don't know the person that blesses is more blessed than the person that receives. So they're always sharing testimony how God blessed them. It's good. But have you ever shared testimony how God used you to bless somebody? I'm going to explain what I mean. Yesterday, I sent some money to somebody. And she was very excited. And I said to her, why are you so happy? He said, she sent me an emoji. I said, what does it mean? He said, shedding tears. I said, did you really shed tears? He said, yes. I said, why? He said, just a few hours ago, I didn't know where, I, where my next money would come from, how I would eat. And then you sent this. I knew that God spoke to you to do it. And she was right. I was on the plane, flying to here all the way from where I was coming from. And he just touched my heart. Send money to this. I did. And he said, God told you. Because I was praying. How do I know that God told me? I, I won't explain that one in this service. I used to be the one always sharing testimony of how I received. I still receive. Oh. Yes, I still do. I have a friend who is so successful. He gives me money. One day he went with his own boss. The boss, they entered the show. The boss told him, you can buy anything in this place. Just take it. I'll pay. You know who his boss was? Strive Masiwa. He said, buy anything. Anything. So there are different levels in this life. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. But watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus said, I must walk the walk of him that sent while it is day. The night is coming. Some people don't know that the reason they are poor is because they go to market and they are buying and buying and buying and they are never selling anything. They have no products in the market. He said, but I'm a civil servant. That doesn't mean anything. Even if you're a civil servant, you must still have a product. 
Maybe it's your time, but you must have a product. You can't just be buying pepper, tomatoes, onions, clothes, hair, attachments, shoe. What did you sell? Those who buy without selling will die poor. And those who are the ones their things are being bought will be making money while they are sleeping. Have you heard about Microsoft before? Do you know I use Microsoft just like you? Every year I renew it for $99. That means the person that owns it will never be poor. Because there are millions like me that pay that money every year. So while he's sleeping, he can never be poor. Product. What do you sell? You're always buying. Your purpose is grace given to you by God. He said, who called us by purpose? Go back to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Purpose and grace. Purpose is the reason we live. Grace is the ability to fulfill it. According to his own purpose and grace. Purpose, they call it grace, the ability. Second service, we'll go there. What has God called you to do with your life? What do you do with your time? What do you do with your time? Can you account for your time? To know purpose, you have to know time. To know purpose, you have to know time. If you can't account for your time, you can't account for your purpose. Five more minutes, and I'll start to round up now. The Bible says that Jesus said, have you never read that he who made them when? At the beginning. Beginning of what? And he said, from the beginning also, it was not so. Beginning of what? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Beginning of what? Beginning of time. Time. God lives outside of time. Does not live in time. He stepped out of timeless eternity. To start the work of creation, he has to dimension life on earth so that even Adam's sin will not be in, will not be in eternity. Adam sinned in time. In the beginning, the first thing God had to create was time. But he created time to create life. In the beginning, God created... In the beginning, God created... Sure. Sure. I'm dividing my time. First is smart. In the beginning, ba 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 God created the heavens and the earth. Beginning, what? Time. Heavens, space, and the earth, matter. Anything that has weight and occupies space is matter. So, time, space, and matter were created simultaneously by God. But God created time to create life. Your time is your life. That's what we call a timeline. Birth, death. What do you do in between? Your life. Listen to me now. Two people are born the same day. October 14, 1969. Maybe 20 people. Maybe five people. October 14, 1969. One is born in Omaha in Nigeria. One is born in Los Angeles, California, United States. One is born in Osaka, Japan. One is born in Accra, Ghana. One is born in Lesotho. The other one is born in Kampala, Uganda. Many more. The same day, the same time, they are now 53 years old. They will be 54 in a few days' time because they are born October 14, 1969. On October 14, which is next Saturday, next week Saturday, they will be, all be 54 years old. If I bring all of them and line them up here now, 10 of them, they are not the same. Some are still looking for money. Some have settled themselves. Some do not even believe you can never be settled in this life. <laughs> Some spend all their time cheating other people. When they see somebody, they'll be thinking, what can I do to get some shillings from this person? And they are born the same day. Why and what is the difference? How they have used their time. You are not old for how long you've lived. You are old for how long you've used your time. It's not the number of years you've lived, not the number of life on earth, but the life in your years on earth. What have you done with your time? That's very powerful. Have you found purpose? There is a supreme task for which you were created. Some people want to marry. You can marry anybody you like. I can prove that from the Bible. But I also tell you there's something else. Do you remember these daughters of Zelophehad? in the Old Testament. You don't remember them? They were all girls. Their father died. They are, they are done about their mother. They didn't talk about it. Their father was dead. And they said, the, the, the members of their tribe said to Moses, these are our daughters. If they marry other people, they, our land move from tribe to tribe. We don't want our land to go to another tribe. 
Zelophehad. And they went to God. Moses went to God. God said to Moses, the girls can marry anybody they want, but not outside of your tribe. Profound statement. Africa needs to hear that. People think when they are going to marry, that because they are praying for God to lead them, that they have done everything they can do. God will not live with your spouse. You will live with your spouse. He cannot choose for you. He can guide you. You will make the choice. Even if somebody comes to you and says, God told me, you're my husband, tell them, let the God that told you tell me because I'm the one going to live with you, not that God. <laughs> you're not going to live with God. You're going to live with a person. The person cannot be using God's name and be manipulating you. If God wants, God can go and live with them. Don't live with the person. Choose to live with the person. It's a choice. Africa needs to hear this. Let me explain. In Africa, in my country where I was born, they say God will do it. It's not true. God will not do it. You will do it. Whatever you do not do will not be done. God will help you, but he will not do it. There are things only God can do. There are things only man can do. God will not do for man what man can do for himself. And man cannot do for God what only God can do for himself. Only God can answer prayer from this perspective of making things happen. But the work on earth is very serious. See this chair. It was not God that made this chair. Now man do him. If you wait for God to do this chair, it will never be done. God has done his part. He gave us mango trees, apple trees, cashew trees. But God cannot give us mango juice. Only man can do that. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. What does that mean? It means that a parent can sponsor an expensive wedding, but only God can give you a prudent wife. Neither your father nor yourself can find a prudent wife, because you have never married before, you don't know. If I give you a woman and say choose, you don't know what to choose. You are choosing her beauty, figure eight, very good. After 40 years and three children, there will be no figure eight, guaranteed. <laughs> And the longer you live in the marriage, the more you hate the figure eight because her attitude and character will trouble you more than her figure. <laughs> the way she talks. You see a, man, a handsome man, tall, good looking. You want to marry them, it's good. But I'm telling you that after two years, the way he talks to you become more important than his good looks. Especially when you have done something wrong. If he doesn't know how to control himself, and just be talk, 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 talk. You say, I wish I didn't marry you. <laughs> Let's not go there. Let's come back. Somebody praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> the hardest work you do on earth is working on yourself. Yeah. Anybody can make excuses. I have anger problem. When I'm angry like this, I've been like, be like that too. I'm full of energy. I know what I want. The spirit of the prophet is not in the hands of God. It's in the hands of the prophet. It's the prophet that controls himself. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that rules his spirit than he that taketh a city. A man that is slow to anger is better than a warrior that takes nations for God. It's better than an evangelist that gets Africa saved. The man that rules his spirit is better than an evangelist that saved the whole of Africa. Yes. How do, you, how do you rule your spirit? How do you become slow in anger? By gaining understanding. In understanding. He said, in malice be children. In understanding, be mature, be a man. How do you get understanding? Read books. Go to school. There are three levels of education. We should start praying. Three levels of education, or three types of education. Formal, informal, non-formal. The richest men on earth have informal education. They educated themselves. University will help you get first class, get degree. If you depend on it, you are going to be poor. Most lecturers are poor all over the world. They can teach very, very well, but they don't have money. Their students go out and make more money than them without knowing as much as they do. Because knowledge by itself will not give you money. You have to enter the ocean of this life and go and practice what you know. It's not just talking about it. Go and do it. When you do it, you know that you don't know enough. You just know the theory of it. The practice of it. Let me tell you something about driving. All of you that drive, just like me, do you remember when you're driving? You can read manual, read manual. The day you enter the car, after one hour, you learn more about car and driving than reading book. One hour. The car will drive you like this, drive you like this. And most people that cannot drive is because they're afraid of the car driving them. Before you can drive a car, the car must first drive you. If you don't let the car drive you, you'll never drive the car. <laughs> Hello? We're almost done. Listen now. 
what were you created to do with your life? There is a task over you. I don't know who you are, but I know you. That's the reason you were born. Inside the purpose of your life is everything you will ever need. The houses you're looking for, the husband you're looking for, the marriage you're looking for, the success you're looking for, the money you need is inside purpose, not outside of purpose. Jesus said, my food, John 4, 24, John 4, 34, my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. My food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. What is your food? My purpose is to do the will of God and to finish that purpose. Can I say something to you? You have no purpose by yourself. Your purpose is purpose inside purpose. Your purpose is the assignment God gave you inside his overall plan. Your plan is not by itself. Don't go about saying, my purpose, my purpose. Your purpose is inside purpose. God is one that has a purpose. But you will never have been born except for a reason. There may be accidental parenting, but no accidental child. No child can ever enter this earth space by accident. It's not possible. Before a child is born, God makes a lot of preparations. A lot of He chooses the sex, the height, the color. He even chooses the country to send the child. Chooses the father and mother of the child. He does a lot of things. It's not possible for a child to be born by accident. Absolute impossibility. And the fact of your birth is the proof of your destiny. Because you will never have been born except your destiny was completed in God. Because you never launch a movie on earth except the movie is finished. God will not, our life on earth is a movie. God will never have launched us except he finished us inside of himself. You were born for a reason. Find that reason. Commit to living for that reason. Next service I'll talk about how. Find it. There is joy inside purpose. That's why Paul said, my life, babos, my life on earth is worth nothing. I don't know how tall you are. I don't know your complexion. I'm telling you now, I don't know your complexion. I don't know your parents, their name, the city you were born, but there was a reason for your birth. You can find that reason. You can embrace that reason. You say, but I failed. I failed. I failed. Oh, you don't know me well. Can I say something to you? Because my time is limited now. There are many success stories on earth that are inside your failure stories. When God designed you and sent you to this world, some of the lessons he wanted to teach you were in your failure, not in your success. God allows you to fail. There are lessons you can learn from failure. You can never learn from success. Oh, you don't understand. Can I show you? Let me give one of them. You see, there is a conviction you have in life when you are cheated by somebody. If I do business with you now or do anything with you, when I was a, I started ministry in Nigeria, I went to the market with a pastor. He cheated me. How do I know? I went back to the market and the people said, come. They come and say, that man you came. He said, we, we cheat here, but he cheats more than us. He said, we're giving you a sign, and, and you will not see the sign. I said, how can I see this? How can I come with a pastor and be looking at a sign? He's a pastor, but he cheated me. But can I say something to you? I, I'm different. Because I was cheated 20 years ago, I have a conviction. If I'm dealing with somebody that is a crook, or not nice, or wants to cheat me, I can feel it, because it's happened over and over. When I feel it, because I don't have the capacity to work with the person. See, some people have a lot of capacity. I have a brother who has capacity. He can work with a crook. I cannot. When I walk, I don't look back. I look straight. If I have to walk with you to look back, I'll never walk with you. Because I don't have the ability to look back. I cannot, I'm not that, I'm not that uh, sophisticated. But why am I the way I have become? Because I've been through things. If you avoid the things I went through, like, you, you cannot be like me. I stayed extra school years in college, but it changed me forever. Why? Fear. The fear is gone. Now I embrace this. I run towards my fear, not away from fear. I don't have things I'm afraid of doing anymore. God took it away from my life. I make the phone call. Some people, they have a call to make. For the last three months, they've not made the call. They are still praying about it. God said, make the call. They say, I'm praying. But the God that answers prayer says you should make the call. The prayer, I pray, who will answer it? The God that answers says, call. Some people think everything is prayer, 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 prayer. Prayer is powerful. But after you pray, you must get up from the place you prayed and go and do. And when you pray, and you didn't hear from God. It means your prayer is a monologue. Prayer is not a monologue, it's a dialogue. The man that prays, who never hears from God, is just wasting his time. If God is not speaking to you, you're in trouble. The moment God speaks to you, your life is changed forever. Yeah. On any situation, rise up on your feet. Rise up. We're going to pray now. Lift up your hands to heaven. Lift up your hands. Very powerful now. One question. Why did God create you? Where were you made? My God. 
my God. If I can find purpose, you can find purpose. I'm not here by accident today. God brought me. He sent me. I know why I came. I know why I was born. Not everything, but I know enough that I don't wake up. I don't wake up confused anymore. There were seasons in life. I was confused. Many years. It was COVID that helped me because I was trapped. Even tested negative, uh, negative, positive to COVID. Ten days in the hospital. When I came out in 20, 2001, my life was changed forever. Even though I've been a Christian for many years, there was clarity. Clarity. In the, you will see that clarity come to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lift up your hands. Receive grace from heaven. Many will testify. You start to have clarity. But you must read. If you don't read books, if you don't read by reading, you have to read by audio, by listening. You must read. If you are lazy mentally, you can't go find life. There must be something you are called to do. You must prepare for it. I can't say everything in one service. I'm so sorry. Lift up your hands. Receive grace in Jesus' mighty name. Receive grace. 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 Your life will never be the same. Listen to me now. I'm, I'm handing over to Pastor in two, three minutes. Any forces of darkness holding you back releases you now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. From now onwards, don't be calling devil. There is no devil that can hold you back. In the name of Jesus. Pastor, come. I'm done.